everybody, Slash and DC here with uh, Nymeria from her channel Nimcraft, and we're playing Vulture for NetHack once again. Hi, Nymeria. Hello, Slash. Today we're going to do a quick overview of the character classes. Every character class, we're going to try to get all 13 of them done in less than 20 minutes, right? We'll talk faster. So let's get started. Uh, first class we'll check out is the Valkyrie. Whoops. Here's the Valkyrie. Boom. Okay. Uh, don't pick it for me. Oh, so here's what we're going to cover. We're going to cover the archaeologist, barbarian, caveman, healer, knight, monk, priest, rogue, ranger, samurai, tourist, Valkyrie, and wizard. We're going to cover the uh, Valkyrie, the knight, and the samurai first because they're kind of similar. So let's pick a Valkyrie and see what we get to start with is a long sword, a dagger, a shield, and a food ration. I think you get these same items every time, pretty much. Well, you got a chance to start with a long sword. A chance to start with a long sword, and right, if and, you can dip it. and if you do start with the long sword, then you could possibly turn that into Excalibur. Right. So this is a Valkyrie strategy. Uh, the Valkyrie's lawful. I think you have to be lawful yes, to you get, don't get a choice. Excalibur, and you have to be experience level five in order to get Excalibur too, right? Correct. So we could just real quick look for a fountain and try a dip. Well, we won't be experience level 5, so we can't try a dip anyway. Uh, but Valkyries are, many people consider them probably the most powerful role in the game overall from their starting strength, starting equipment, the chance to get Excalibur, and... Uh, yeah, they're one of the easiest characters to ascend with, apparently. So there's your uh, there's your first choice. Possibly try a Valkyrie for the uh, chance to get Excalibur and the what may be the easiest role to play. Yeah, good luck with that. Next up, the knight. Whoop. I'm still having problems with my inner key. There we go. Let's pick a knight. And I'll randomize everything else. Everything else. <laughs> Knights also start lawful no matter what. They also start lawful, and I think they always start with a horse, which is saddled. Yeah, and you can ride it. The only time I ever tried to play as a knight uh, was when I first started playing Slash, and the very first time we got this kind of interface a long time ago. Uh -huh. I started with a horse, and you're like, you should ride it. I climbed in the horse, and I fell off to my death. Yeah, I have actually found out that's kind of a common thing to happen when you're a low-level character. You should wait until you've got more hit points so that a fall off a horse doesn't kill you. Yeah, so that is it. Screw horses, screw knights. <laughs> and that was an easy quit, huh? Yeah, I was done with them. Yeah, this knight also started with a long sword, which I'm thinking might be guaranteed, but maybe not. But uh, so there you go. Once again, chance to get Excalibur's right there. You're lawful. You start with a long sword. Find a fountain. Dip that thing. You got a one sixth chance to get a very powerful weapon. Good starting um, uh, armor, obviously low armor class and uh, relatively high strength. I've never played with that lance before. It's a heavy uh, weapon. And you start out with some food, which is always good. To feed your horse. Uh, yeah, you, the food that you start with is horse compatible. <coughs> you read, note, there are no valuable items in this grave. Oh, right, because you can start with Blessed Cursed, I think, is a knight, too. Start uh, identifying Blessed Cursed? I think so. What? Really? I that's interesting. We're going to take that under advisement. Well, you start with something like that. You really should have read up on the night before you did this. Even more than that. Even more <laughs> than I already did. Um, then, of course, you've got to follow your lawful conduct. And let's see. It's. Uh, I don't know how you get, like, how do you take the saddle off the pony? That part I don't know. Um chatting with the pony doesn't do it. Do we know how to ride the pony, by the way? Yeah, I know this is probably, we're going to fall to our death because we're experience level one, but it's probably under extended commands. Ride? Yeah, ride in this direction. Oh! Hey, you know, we just talked about falling to your death, and guess what? I'm riding the pony right now. <laughs> Which, that makes you look like a pony? Yeah, apparently there's no animation for me being on the pony. Um, that should make you way faster, though, right? Apparently, I can open doors as a person riding a pony. I can search. And I want to switch to my lance and give this a try since I am on a horse. 
Okay, knights can identify all weapons and non-magical armor from the beginning. They also oh. have the special intrinsic ability to jump like a knight piece in a chest. In chess. Well, let's try a jump. They're able to turn undead, and their special spell is turn undead. A spell, you say? No, I don't know any spells right now, it tells me. I'm going to try this jumping of which you speak. Extended commands, jump. And if you move like a knight piece, that means one over and two up. There you go. You would be able to jump over traps and jump around monsters and so on while you're on your horse. I think Slash is just enjoying playing as a knight. Hey, yeah. Uh, we do have fun. other characters to get to, those. <laughs> we do, we do. So, okay, neat class there. A lot of, uh, a lot of neat things about it, and that's the knight. Next up, the samurai. Where's the samurai? <clears throat> Okay, so <clears throat> as a samurai, we're going to start lawful. So these are all lawful warriors that we've checked out so far. Start with a katana and a wakazashi, some yumi and some ya, or a yumi and some ya. <laughs> and a rust-proof splint mail. Nice piece of armor. So ranged weapons, big factor for this class, looks like. Right. So um, we could go over, these are already quivered. There's a quiver command for putting these in your quiver, but we kind of covered this in one of our videos real briefly, but we didn't actually do it. I'm going to use a ranged weapon on camera, and then there'll be proof forever that I have actually used a ranged weapon before, or ever, since it's really not something I ever do. Okay, cool. Let's do it. So I want to wield my bow, which is a Yumi, and then I'm just going to use the F key to fire an arrow. Yeah. That arrow killed him and flew on through, didn't it? Okay, so Samurais, it says, are one of the easiest characters to start with in the early game. They are always lawful. They're always human. Aha. Uh -huh. And they always start with a dog. I wonder if the dog had a name. It does. Its name is Hachi. Oh, the dog's name was Hachi. Well, I didn't It always it starts out. with a dog named Hachi. And you start with intrinsic speed. Uh, oh, is, here's my, oh, okay, now the samurai is a lawful warrior type class, but he doesn't start with a longsword. Guess what? I just found a fountain. So, you can't, um, you can't dip your katana in that and hope for, Well, you uh, couldn't right now anyway, because you're not a fighter. Right, exactly. So, no worries. I am loving this bow and arrow, though. All right, anything else we need to know about the samurai? Um, that the names of their weapons are Japanese. Good to know. So the short sword is what the wakizashi is. Gotcha. So it's you basically got a long sword and a short sword. Right. Um, but no, I think that that's about it. Apparently they've got pretty high damage. They've got a code of conduct you've got to follow. So you do not want to dig up a grave. You don't want to attack anything peaceful. Um, if you attack with a poison weapon, you get a negative luck. Ooh, good to know. Um, if it moves, stab it. That's your strategy as a samurai. Sounds like a character I could play. Yeah, it does. That's pretty neat. All right, next. All right, next up, one of my favorites, the wizard. Wizard. Well, let's randomize everything else. Oh, random. All right. You like wizards because you can be chaotic with the wizard. I like being chaotic. I do. There, here's the other thing I like about the wizard. They start with a lot of stuff. So you're going to start with three random scrolls, two random spell books, three random potions, two random rings, and one or two random wands. I think it's one or two random wands. Might be one random wand. And maybe a musical instrument. And it's not completely random. Like, I don't think you're going to start with a wand of wishing, but the choices. You can. You can. You start can? With, yeah, it's a chance. Oh, wow. Chance to start with a wand of wishing. So, yeah, you never know what you're going to get and what combination of items that you're likely to get. I got a potion of polymorph here, but no ring of polymorph control. So what a lot of people do who want to get a really great start at the game, I think you call it save scumming. You just start a wizard. You look at what he's got. If you don't like it, walk up the stairs, start another wizard, see what he's got until you get a nice combination like a, you know, a ring of polymorph control and a potion of polymorph or a wand of polymorph, which would give you basically doppelganger abilities from Slashem or uh, 
start with a really great wand of lightning and the scroll of identify or whatever it is that you're looking for. And with a wizard, you have very low HP, very low strength, so you fight. You cannot fight. You basically want to try to use your uh, spells because you're the best spellcaster, period. Obviously, but it says at level 17, you get teleport control. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. And at level 8, you can teleport at will if you have teleportitis. Oh, I like that. That's teleport choice or whatever. Yeah, you're not going to do a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat, especially early on with the wizard, but he starts, I think he always starts with a force bolt spell. He may also start with a magic missile spell, which is probably even better, but force bolt doesn't bounce at least. So there you go. I just killed that goblin. He never got close to me. You are going to use up your power stat. There you go. I started with eight power. That cast cost five, so you're going to cast it sporadically until you level up, but a high-level wizard can have finger of death spell, uh, really high damage magic Stone missile spell, spell. Stone to flesh, stars. yeah, sure. Uh, also, no hunger penalty for casting, and I'm thinking that a wizard can cast spells from every category of spells without a penalty, but uh, don't take that to the magic memory vault. Alright, we've looked at the wizard, now let's look at the priest. The priest is not considered a powerful role. It's considered a hard role. But in my opinion, it's a really fun role. Their main talent is to be able to already know the blessed, cursed, or uncursed status of any item that they find. So you get in the habit playing other roles of, you know, you don't want to put on a piece of armor or a blindfold or try wielding a weapon that you don't know is cursed or not. The priest doesn't have that restriction. And that makes it, I think, really fun to play. He also starts with a blunt weapon, and uh, can't use rain, can't use edged weapons, or can't oh, advance the skill in range weapons. Stone to flesh. Start with a couple spell books. Stone to flesh, create monster. I'm sure those are somewhat random. Ooh, you know, starting with a spell book of create monster in this case would make sacrificing in an altar a cinch. If you can do it. Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Uh, starting with a clove of garlic here as a bane against um, vampires. Oh, four potions of holy water. Also a nice thing that the priest can start with there. Uh, holy water you can dip an item into and bless it. Now there was an extended command in Slasham to bless things. I don't think that... Uh, no, that's a monster. Yeah, because that a, was a technique. And we yeah, don't have that's techniques. a technique ability, which we don't have. So, you know, stick with your blunt weapons when you're playing the priest. Uh, don't expect to be able to advance your skills in ranged weapons beyond basic. Oh, well, I think it's a great class. I like it a lot. And you can be chaotic as a priest for all you chaotics out there. So next up, we're going to give a look to the ranger. Um, we've actually played with a ranger earlier on when we were just playing the game. My ranger didn't live very long, because I went into hand-to-hand -hand combat, and I was about an experience level 2, and I think I should have been using my ranged weapons. Uh, guaranteed to start with a bow and a whole bunch of arrows. And this cloak of displacement. I had that on my last character. Oh, I think that right. must be default. Um, dagger, not a great weapon. Definitely want to probably find a better hand-to-hand -hand weapon. Uh, that was my problem, for trying to fight with that dagger. When, uh, you know, you got a almost a hundred arrows on you, you might as well just fire arrows and survive on these cram rations. You know, you're not going to have to find food. Rangers cannot use two-handed weapons, by the way. Rangers cannot use two-handed weapons. Any armor restrictions or anything like that? Uh, I don't see anything. They, it says they have a advanced rate of healing, though. Oh, really? That's nice. You know, we're not going to keep this character because we're just doing a quick tutorial, but for note, I found an elven mithril coat laying on the floor. I'm going to put that thing on. That gave me AC7, and I'm going to put my cloak on over that. What would that bring us to? Oh, it was a minus two elven mithril coat. Nice. Probably cursed. I haven't tried to take it off to find out. Yeah, well, that didn't help our cause very much, so, you know, rule of thumb, don't wear anything you find until you find out whether it's cursed or not. But anyway, there's the ranger class. Rely on that bow stock up on arrows. Maybe you can uh, 
this is a neutral ranger, so he wouldn't have any uh, restrictions on using poisoned weapons or attacking fleeing monsters or anything like that. So get those monsters to flee and shoot them in the back, I say. Yep. Next up, the caveman. So you can be a human, dwarvish, or gnomish caveman. And are cavemen always lawful, I guess? Uh, no, they can either be lawful or neutral. Oh, uh, depending on their race? Yeah. Aha. Their special spell is dig. Their default pet is a dog named Slasher. Ah, okay. So starting with a club and a sling and the sling is to throw the 17 flint stones that I started with or you could throw the rocks. Awfully heavy but it's a adequate projectile isn't it? Yeah it says a good uh, starting people usually drop that when they start this game. The stones? Yeah. You can see why because the stones here you've got 26 projectiles but they weigh 250. Uh, yeah I definitely want to drop that. Started with some leather armor and uh, but the flint stones, if I remember right, do more damage than the stones when you sling them. You could sling, couldn't you sling gems out of your sling also for damage? I have no idea. I think so. Um, it says they start with a weak weapon, a weak armor. They're much weaker version of a barbarian, much harder version of barbar of barbarians. Uh huh. But the uh, they look awesome. They're the only character that can get expert in spears. Nice. Good to know. So, speaking of cavemen, let's check out the barbarian. Well, I mean, we're like we're like pros in barbarian. We know barbarians. Yeah, we are barbarian pros. We've got lots to say about barbarians, although we may not say it all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that they're so far from what I've seen, they're a pretty good starting class because they're strong and they've got sometimes that two-handed weapon that's cool and they've got a good uh, sacrifice gift and um, yeah, I bet your dog's name is Idafix. Oh, is that a cat? That's a cat, so no name. If you had a dog, it'd be Idafix. Uh-huh, yeah. So what is it we liked about the Barbarians the most? Probably the strength and the two-handed weapon. Yes. Which gives them great damage. Oh, they have starting poison resistance. Mm, so that's good. You're not going to get poisoned. I hate it when a new character gets killed by a poison dart. Or some crazy thing like that. Uh, food was a little bit of a problem for us. But not really. Because you could just eat anything. Yeah. Just anything you kill, eat it. Even if it was a poisonous corpse, evidently. Although I didn't try that. But, um, but you could. But I could have. And I think that the Barbarian quest is reputedly easier than some. If, even if that means you just made that up? Even even if I just made that. Don't take that to the Magic Memory Vault and try to deposit it. You can't deposit anything in the Magic Memory Vault. <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, all the way around, Barbarian, I think, great starting class. Very powerful. Agreed. And now I should probably, I called this character Monk, because we're going to check out a monk. I probably should have called this character Nimcraft. <laughs> yes, this is my favorite character to play with, period. And if you want a, a pretty high damage character that you can just walk through the dungeons with, this is your best bet, really. So Mostly because they start with healing items. That is very helpful. That's nice. I drink these right off the bat to boost my HP. Nim doesn't. So you got 14 HP. You can just drink this thing right down. Boom, you got 15. Drink the other two, you got 16. To me, that's an early advantage. But there's no point in a month for you to do that because when you kill about five monsters, yeah. you're going to level up. All right. And then those two points of HP will have meant nothing. And then whenever you get lower level, you're level 7 or 8, and you're trying to kill something that nearly kills you, you've got nothing to heal with. So you just go back to those potions of healing and keep right on fighting. Yes, and sometimes, um, and you start with a random scroll and a random spell book, mm -hmm. and the spell, not a random spell book, that was a lie. Okay, the truth is you start with one of three spell books, either sleep, protection, or healing, Yeah. because you can only do level one of any group. Aha. Uh -huh. 
um, as a monk, you can't, you're not a very good spellcaster, but you can do level one of any spells. So, one way to do that is, I, like, I refuse to play a monk that doesn't start with a healing spell book for the most part. Because I find sleep and protection nearly worthless. If you've got a healing spell book and you start with those healing potions, you're intrinsically fast when you start out. You get intrinsics really fast. Um, a monk gets an intrinsic every like three levels it goes up or something crazy like that. Um, you're sleep resistant automatically. You're stealthy. You're fast. And um, within like five levels, you've got warning and searching. And I think when you get to level 10, you get teleport control. But don't count on it. That's not an official word, right? We're, this is opinion? That's not an opinion. It is not an opinion. It you is a fact. You do get teleport control. I think it's level 10. Ah, I got you. Okay. But don't wear body armor, right? Do not wear body armor. Do not try to use a wielded weapon or you will regret it. Okay, I'm going to put it on. Drop it on the altar. Oh, you can, we can check the curse on this thing. See, we're trying to make a video that's not cursed. Wear that sucker. Uh, oh. <laughs> You're suddenly very You're feminine. You're suddenly very feminine in the amulet disintegrate. So that was an amulet of... Uh, changing. Changing, otherwise known as sex changing. Uh, okay, well, you know, it's really hard to make these videos because I just want to play with every character we make. Yes. Well, I want to play with a monk. Hey, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to hit save and you can play with this monk if you want. You're I now. don't want to play with that monk because <laughs> that monk can start with a healing spell book. Blech. Anyway, next. Kick you so now let's talk about a little bit of a strange role. The healer, which, if I could find him on the list, I rarely play there as a is. healer. I'm up, looking right up, past it. Up, up, up there. There it is. Must be why I never play with a healer. Um, you can't see it. Because I can't see it on the screen. So healers start with healing stuff. You got uh, oh, a scalpel to fight with. Okay, leather gloves. Fine. Some apples. Okay. Spell books of healing and extra healing. Stone to flesh. To I turn, you can't cast it. To turn all your uh, boulders into meat. And potions of healing and extra healing and a wand of sleep to uh, put monsters to sleep with so you can do surgery with your scalpel, evidently. And a stethoscope is kind of fun to play with, actually. Let's see if I'm next to my pet. Yeah. So you can apply your stethoscope in a certain direction and it will tell you the status of the monster. So kitten is neutral. It's a level 1 with 4 HP and an AC6 tame. Oh, so, you know, that's kind of fun, actually. The uh, sewer rat is a level zero with four HP and AC of seven. Good to know, right? Sure. <laughs> uh, I was always wondering about the sewer rats. Yeah. You're going to die making this two second video. No, I'm not. I'm going to drink <laughs> one of my potions of extra healing, which, you know, going back to what I say, I always drink these right off the bat to get my uh, HP up. I'm just going to see how far that gets us here. Um, that got us to uh, 24 HP at level 1. Now, I just want to cool. say, I think as a wizard, that that's a good idea. Because the odds of you getting to a level 2 are high, are not so good. You know? Because you actually have to kill something. But if you're playing a high a character that kills things fast, I wouldn't do that. There you go. Many ways to play the game. Some of them are better than others. But which ones? Uh, apparently, if I leveled up, I could cast Stone to Flesh at this boulder and turn it into a giant meatball. So that's one way to feed yourself as a healer. And I've just read that uh, a healer is a good way to run the protection racket. If you're unfamiliar with that strategy, it entails not leveling up, going down to the uh, altar in Mine Town, and paying the priest for protection. Uh, every time you pay him for protection, he'll lower your natural AC. And uh, if you have found enough gold and you didn't level up any because leveling up increases the cost of the protection, you should be able to get your natural AC down really low. And then when you put your armor on, it's even lower and you've got an advantage in the game. So healer, you know, you got to play it a certain way, perhaps, but fun roll. All right, here's another good roll, the archaeologist. Top of the list. Human, dwarvish, gnomish, whatever you like. 
and get your choice of alignments somewhat. Not sure you can have a chaotic archaeologist. So you're Indiana Jones. This is your current current character. My current character in my Let's Play is an archaeologist. I'm really having fun with it too. Bullwhip, not that great, but fine. It works. It's fine. Leather jacket, fedora, not the best armor in the world. I mean, I've got two pieces of armor on my AC, still nine, so probably want to switch that out, but it's fun to wear. Food rations, you start with a pickaxe and a tinning kit and a sack and maybe a lamp and always a touchstone. Uh, pickaxe, pretty fun to play with. You can uh, dig your own passageways with it. I remember when I uh, played this as a kid, I had a lot of fun digging out my own passageways and digging my way between rooms and digging my way through the floor to go down to the next level instead of having to find the staircase. That can be a fun piece of equipment. And the touchstone, if we were to find a gem right off the bat, I could show how the touchstone works, but basically it will identify any gem that you find or any stone that you find, like a gray stone. Uh, yeah, which is handy. That is really... A touchstone is, is extremely handy. Yeah. Starting with one is amazing. It really is, because you know, a touchstone is a gray stone. So you tend to find these gray stones down in the mines, and then you've got to figure out whether they're touchstones or not. Oh, and by the way, I am thinking, we talked about this on my Let's Play, This you're starting with an uncursed touchstone, and I had said that you were, you had to bless a touchstone in order to identify right, gems. That's a slasher mechanic. Are you sure it's not this fact? That it has to be blessed unless you're an archaeologist, and then you can use an uncursed that touchstone. Can be a true thing. Right, then you can use your uncursed touchstone to get a guaranteed identify, whereas sure. you need a blessed one with the other rolls. So that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I think that's what's going on there. What's the other thing? Okay, the tinning kit. This is a good way to store up food. If you find a tin opener, once again, I'm going to say you're probably going to want a tin opener before you start tinning everything in sight. Uh, Gridbug's not going to leave a corpse, so we can't tin him. Welcome to the mines. Oh yeah, I'm almost dead already. Probably not wise to rush down here that fast. But anyway, you can kill, uh, kill a monster and then grab his corpse up. Use your tinning kit. I think he's going to kill me in this hit. No, but he didn't leave a corpse. So we're not going to demonstrate that fact. But anyway, pull out your uh, tinning kit. Apply it. And it'll ask you what you want to tin. And I don't think you can tin stuff like oranges. No. Or food rations. No. You would need a corpse in order to tin. And uh, that would preserve your food throughout your playthrough. So there you go. Archaeologist, fun roll. Neat equipment. All right, now let's check out the rogue. Human or orc are your choices there. And the rogue, a lot like the ranger, starts with some ranged weapons. In this case, it's going to be throwing daggers and a potion of sickness to poison your daggers. And a lock pick and a sack. You must have started as a human. If you started as an orc, you would get food to start with. Orcs have a lot of different advantages. They've got higher hit points and all that. Um, humans have higher other stuff. No, they can be neutral with dwarfs, and orcs cannot be neutral with dwarfs, so mine town can be easier as a human. But food wise, strength wise, you bet, might want to go with an orc. But, you know, those two actually, this is one of the rare characters where if you start with a human or an orc, that will determine how good of a game you've got. So you want to do that based on your gameplay. Nice, right. All right, and rely on those ranged weapons, especially early on. Yes, and eventually dip your daggers in your potion of sickness. Yes. And the yeah. final roll. Right. Okay, my line? Yeah, your, your line. Okay, your line. my line. Last, and in my opinion, least, the tourists. Nymeria hates tourists. I do hate tourists. In real life, and in this game. Actually, I've got nothing against tourists in real life. We don't really live in a touristy community. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if tourists showed up where we live, I would hate them, because they would be stupid, and I wouldn't understand why they were here. It looks like tourists have to play as human. Well, yeah. Um, there are no orcish tourists. <laughs> <laughs> that would be even weirder. <laughs> that is so. 
Um, good chance to role play here. You're a tourist in the Dungeons of Doom. I mean, you know, all the heroes have already gone through, and you're down here just uh, taking photos of everything with your expensive camera. Yeah. Unlocking doors with your credit card, and checking out all the levels, bringing your handy magic maps. I guess these are in the brochure. And here is uh, dungeon level one. <laughs> and you look at your map. Oh, yeah, okay. Here, let's take a picture of Idafix. Or uh, not Idafix, my dog. Won't that aggravate him? I don't know what it'll do. I'm going to try it. The little dog turns to flee. The little dog is blinded by the flash. I'm sure that... Don't do that to your pet. I just did that to demonstrate. That's what the camera is for. Um, you can't actually take pictures of the floor or walls or anything. Apparently in the later game, to. the tourist is one of the best characters. In the early game, I don't think so. Hey, uh, how do I get in this bathroom? Well, I imagine you're going to use a door. I'm a tourist looking for the restroom. Hey, I need it in the restroom. Oh, it's locked. I'll just use my credit card to unlock it. What kind of person uses a credit card to unlock a bathroom door? I don't know, but there was a monster in the bathroom. I blinded him with the flash of my camera, and now I'm going to take him out of this world. Ha! I gotta say, I would not survive <laughs> three levels as a tourist. Uh, you start with a Hawaiian t-shirt. Pretty neat, because you can wear that under your body armor. So let's say you were able to get your Hawaiian t-shirt enchanted up to five, and you had plus five body armor. I mean, that's just that much more AC. And the darts you start with are in a quiver. You don't start with a weapon, looks like, so you just want to throw these darts, probably. Start with some food, of course, because you brought some food along on your trip, and potions of extra healing, which I would immediately rename alcohol. But you can get booze. Why would you name them Oh, okay. Alcohol? Good point. Yeah. Where's the potions of booze? Um, and that's the tourist. You should start your own class. I should drunk. start my... <laughs> it starts with nothing but potions of food. It's the tourist. Oh, yeah. That would be cool, actually. Right. Nice idea. And uh, teleport strongs. Yeah, scrolls and teleport. Yeah. Anyway, that's going to conclude our overview of the uh, character classes in Vulture for NetHack. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Yep. Bye.